Hello, everybody. The other day, I found this uh, flux capacitor here on AliExpress, and I wanted to use it in one of my electronic designs and uh, create a circuit board around it. It's actually pretty amazing, just uh, like in the 80s, those flux capacitors, they, they used to be pretty much the size of a shoebox, right? but you can see uh, nowadays they kind of come as SMD-mounted devices, and uh, they're actually not all that expensive. So you can, for example, see here on AliExpress, there is uh, one variant for $7.31. So I wanted to use one of those devices. However, there was no footprint available, which will let me use the flux capacitor here on a PCB board. And therefore, I had to learn how to make custom electronic devices in the Fusion 360 electronics workspace. And this is what I wanted to show you today, how I went about creating this uh, custom component here. So let's get started. So the first thing you will need to make a electronic component, and particularly if you are planning to have a 3D rendering of your electronic component, which then gets rendered onto your PCB board, you need a 3D model of the device. And what I started with is this model of a flux capacitor by Ron Devlin. And I imported this into Fusion and I scaled it down by a factor of 10. And then we can create a drawing, which gives us all the relevant dimensions to place our solder pads for the footprint we have to create for this device. So the first thing we need to do in order to create an electronic device, we need to either create a new electronic library or use an existing library. In this case, I will start with a new electronic library. So we go up here under File and we say New Electronic Library. We can also save this library right away. Well, let me call this back to the dot 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 save. And then in our new library, we can create uh, symbols, footprints, and three packages. And those three components actually will be combined to make one new component. So typically in Fusion, you go kind of from left to right. But in this case, actually, I start with the new symbol. And I can call this again flux underscore C for flux capacitor. And then we need to create pins. I create pins and I want four pins in this case. I want one to right click on any component. We'll rotate it. Four of those components here. And I want to give them names. So if I highlight it and I can count, call this one here ground. I can call this one here power. And I call this one here tack to tachyon in. And I call this one here tack out for tachyons out because you have ever worked with flux capacitors you know those are the, the main inputs here and outputs and we need to be extremely careful because if you connect a tachyon out to a tachyon in you can potentially disrupt the space time continuum so we want to make sure that our design rules will, will catch if we make the wrong connections so we should give those outputs a direction here so let's make this an output and let's make this one here an input and later on, if you connect an input to an input, Fusion is smart enough to, to give you a warning that you make some wrong electrical connection here. And similarly here, we can turn our ground pin into a power pin and our power pin also into a power pin. So that looks pretty good. Let me just move them out a little bit so we can actually see this a little bit better. And I can also give it a little bit of a cosmetic box around here. There, there, there. And I can even symbolize that this is a little bit of a flux capacitor here by putting in some symbols. I want to make some diagonal lines. So I click on diagonal and go from here to here and from, let's say, here to here. So I think this is uh, reasonably clear that this is a flux capacitor and we can say done. And once we have our symbol, we can go ahead and save it. So save it and then create a new footprint up here. And again, I call my footprint also flux capacitor. And now what I like to do is actually first import a silk screen representation of our device. And to get that, I have to go back to the model and create another drawing. And in this case, the drawing will be from the top 
and I need to make sure that my scale is one to one so it imports the relevant parts at the right scale. Okay, so here now is our little flux capacitor. Now I can then actually export it as a DXF file. Just say save and I already have done this so override. And now I can go back to my footprint and I can go here under place and say import XF file. And I have to find it on my computer and I hope this would be in my temp file right here. And you can see here is the entire sketch. And I want to first of all make sure this is reasonably well lined up with the center here. It doesn't have to be perfect just yet. Say done. And then I actually can delete all the components which I don't want to have on my footprint. Then I can grab this one more time and move it like precisely onto here. And if this doesn't let you move it with fine enough steps because it snaps this grid here, you can set this here to finest. And then if you click the Alt key while moving it, hopefully this will let me move this then right there. So this is nicely centered. And then I can start creating uh, pads here. So in this case, I want to use a surface mount pad. And since I want to have kind of non-standard pads, I'm not using the, the standard sizes here, which typically you would use if you're trying to model a more standard component. But in this case, actually, I want to make those around. So I say 100% roundness. And I want the dimensions here to be 260 by 260. And I can place this on here again. I need to kind of hold down my Alt key. And I can place another one right here. That looks good. Then I also can create a through hole right here where my power comes through. So if you take a look at the model here one more time. So this would be here for, for the through hole component. So take a through hole. And this one here is a 65 mil through hole. I want this to be round. So I can place this right on here. Let me make this smaller so I have a little bit more real estate here. Place this right here. And if you're not perfectly happy with the placement, we actually can find adjust this by clicking our component here. And then we take a look at where this component actually is at 66 and 23. We go back here, make this a 23 and this a 66 230. And now this has uh, snapped nicely onto my position here. And the last thing I want to do is I want to have a large ground pad here. So in this case, I actually need to use a polygon shape and then to make sure that it's, it's on the top layer one, which is my top copper layer. I also want to make sure I'm grabbing this uh, round corners here. And then if I drag my polygon around my outline here, and this is not too critical, this is precise. Right here, I have a copper layer. And in order to be able to give this copper layer here actually a name, I need to grab another SMD component and place this right here in the middle. And now I can also connect pins to this copper layer here. There's one more thing I have to do, and this is I need to make a mask on top of here. So there is no solder mask placed on this copper layer here. So I need to go to layer 29, solder mask top. I want no solder mask here, and I need to essentially do the same thing. I need to draw another polygon around here from, from here to here to here to here, here, and all the way up. Just make sure you press your control key again so you don't snap onto any grid and you're kind of free to place it where it needs to be. And now I can go back to my top layer here. I can actually give those pads name. And I want to give them the same names that I gave the pins on my symbol. So this would be the tachyon in. This would be my ground. This would be my tachyon out. This one here will be my power pin. And the last thing I want to do for my footprint here, I actually want to drill holes wherever I place my flux capacitor. So we can go into here and say holes. And those holes have a diameter of 0 0.04 inches. So, oops, one more time. So this would be maybe a little bit room to spare 45 and I can place those holes again onto my through holes here on my 3D model. There. And there.
All right, fantastic. That should be it. Done, save. And once I have my footprint created, I actually need to go in here. And now I don't go to new package because this will just lead me to a workspace where I can create new packages from scratch. I actually will right click on the footprint I just created and say create new 3D model. And sure, I can save it. You can see here now I already have the outline of my footprint here. And I can simply import this model as a 3D component. I say, okay, I can actually go back here into the solid workspace and use constraints to constrain my capacitor here on my footprint. And you can see that uh, all lines up fairly nicely. So I have my through all here, I have my solder pads and my component is right on top. So with this, I just have to go back here to package and say finish. And here we go. Now we have created a symbol, a footprint, and a 3D package. And all we have to do now is combine those three components into one functioning electronic component. So now actually I click on here. And again, I call this flux capacitor. Say OK. And in this case now, I need to add a symbol to this component. And I don't want to create a new one because I already have one. So I just say add. And this is the only component which is in this library. So this is what I'm picking now. And I want to line this component up with this origin of my device. So right here, done. And then I have to add a package. So I have to go into here. It's kind of nondescript, but new. This is for a new package. And I say local package. And I want to take my capacitor I've just created. And you can see now here, I have my footprint and my 3D model associated with the sketch. And the last thing I have to do here is then connect all the different pins. And if you went through and ma made the pins with similar names on the symbol as well as on the footprint, then it's as simple as just connecting those pins together, power to power, ground to power, and tag in to tag in and tag out to tag out and say, OK. And then we can save our component. So that should be essentially it. Now this component is ready for prime time and we can start using it in an electronic design. So let's do just that. So again, up here, new electronic design this time. What I like to do, I like to first create a new schematic before I save anything. Because if I have my new electronic design and my schematic and then I save it, and let's call this again, flux capacitor. Save. You will see that now I have I have an electronic schematics and my combined electronics uh, workspace here with the same name. All right, and then we can go and actually use our new library. So in this case, the library is called Back to the Future, and I have my flux capacitor here, and I can move it into my schematics. Done. I can also add a frame. The frame I like to use is this. Uh, frame a landscape. Here we have a frame. Done. Just move this thing a little bit in the middle here. And we can then add additional components. So let's just maybe add a capacitor. This one here looks nice enough. One here, one here. And also, can we get a couple of resistors? Use this one here. Place a resistor right here and right here. And maybe one more thing here. Get a nice transistor. Let's see what looks nice here. That one looks good. Put one of those transistors right here because we definitely want to amplify our tachyons. And then we have to connect, make our relevant connections here. So let's go from here to here, here to here. Let me put a ground in here. Grounds are under the power symbols. Actually, let's first grab some power. Maybe our device operates under 12 volts. Here is 12 volts. Ground, wonderful. I can put a ground on here. Put a ground on here. Definitely only ground on here. One ground on here. And I think I'm happy with that. Let me just make my ground network a little bit larger. 
So let's add a ground network here. And we add our ground and add 12 volt. Well, let's just add our ground here. And let's also add a power network. Make those lines a little bit bigger. And I want to change the rules here a little bit. I want those to have a 0 0.1 and also as well 0 0.1 width for its um, PCB traces. So let's save and switch to PCB document and see what we get. Well, so here we have all our components. I can use my flex capacitor, move this one in here, move my capacitors in here, one here, one here. And of course, you can spend an endless amount of time moving those components around until you're happy with their placement. Then I can also reduce the size of my PCB board here, just like so. And with that, we can push our design into the third dimension. Let's see. All right, here we go. Here we have our design. We have our components located on our PCB board. Can switch the components on and off. And it looks a little bit funny here because it looks like there is still a solder mask over this ground plate here. But if you actually go to manufacturing, manufacturing right here, and you take a preview of your board, you can see that the solder mask indeed is excluded from, from this ground pad here. So there's some kind of issue with the rendering, but this is not being pushed through to the uh, Gerber file. So here your file will be just fine. All right, I think that's what I had for today. If you found us useful, please give it a like and uh, consider subscribing and have a great day. Bye-bye.